Breaking news in the space race. While SpaceX gears up for Starship's seventh flight test with groundbreaking new features, Blue Origin's new Glenn faces a rocky road to the launch pad. The contrast couldn't be sharper. One company pushing the boundaries of innovation, the other struggling to join the orbital club. SpaceX just dropped major news about Flight 7, shifting the launch date to January 15th. This isn't just another test flight. For the first time, they're attempting to catch the super heavy booster with the Mechazilla arm and deploy actual payloads. Talk about raising the stakes. Meanwhile, across the industry, Blue Origin's path to orbit has hit turbulence. Their much-anticipated New Glenn debut keeps sliding right from January 10th to the 12th, then to the 13th. And that's just the beginning of the story. As they wrestle with vehicle subsystem issues, SpaceX's Falcon 9 just crushed another record, completing its 25th launch and landing of a single booster. And speaking of industry shifts, the European Space Agency is tightening its belt for 2025, sparking questions about their future in the space race. With a budget cut to 7.68 billion euros, they're having to make some tough calls about their priorities. This is Elon Musk 24 hours, and today we're diving deep into these game-changing developments that are reshaping the future of space exploration. Let's dive right in. The anticipation surrounding Starship's seventh flight test has reached new heights, and for good reason. While the January 13th target has shifted to January 15th, this adjustment only adds to the mounting excitement. This isn't just another routine launch. SpaceX is pushing the boundaries of what's possible in ways that would have seemed like science fiction just a few years ago. The real game changer for Flight 7 lies in its ambitious objectives. For the first time, SpaceX isn't just aiming to launch and land. They're attempting something that's never been done before. The Mechazilla catch system, those massive robotic arms at Starbase, will attempt to catch the super heavy booster as it returns from the edge of space. It's a ballet of precision engineering where a 230-foot rocket booster weighing thousands of tons will have to align perfectly with mechanical arms designed to pluck it from the sky. One slight miscalculation, one minor timing issue, and the whole operation could end very differently than planned. The preparation for this historic attempt has been meticulous. On January 11th, SpaceX teams conducted their wet dress rehearsal, a crucial practice run that simulates every aspect of launch day except ignition. The site of S-33, the Starship upper stage, being de-stacked from B-14, its super heavy booster, created a stark visual reminder of the scale of this operation. Engineers swarmed over both vehicles, conducting detailed tile inspections and making final adjustments to the catching system. The cowbell vent covers on B-14 were replaced, a small but crucial detail in ensuring everything works perfectly on launch day. But the stakes go beyond just catching the booster. Flight 7 marks another crucial milestone, the first deployment of actual payloads during a Starship test flight. This transitions Starship from a pure test vehicle to a genuine spacecraft capable of delivering cargo to orbit. The implications are enormous. Success here would demonstrate that Starship isn't just an impressive technological achievement, but a practical tool for expanding humanity's presence in space. The pressure of fueling operations alone highlights the complexity of this mission. Picture this. 11 million pounds of liquid methane and liquid oxygen need to be loaded into the vehicle. That's enough propellant to fill several Olympic-sized swimming pools, all of which needs to be kept at temperatures cold enough to freeze air solid. A single contamination, a single leak, could force a delay of several days while the tanks are purged and refilled. Meanwhile, across the space industry landscape, Blue Origin's story presents a stark contrast. Their new Glenn rocket, named after astronaut John Glenn, was supposed to mark the company's triumphant entry into orbital spaceflight. Instead, it's become a case study in the challenges of rocket development. The launch date has bounced from January 10th to the 12th, then to the 13th, with each delay attributed to vehicle subsystem issues, a phrase that hints at the complexity of the problems they're facing. But here's what makes this situation particularly critical for Blue Origin. They're not just trying to launch a rocket. They're fighting for their future in the commercial space race. The successful deployment of their payload 
isn't just about completing a mission, it's about proving they can compete in the orbital launch market. Their goal of securing United States Space Force certification hangs in the balance, a certification that would open the door to lucrative military and government contracts. The timing couldn't be more challenging for Blue Origin, especially when contrasted with SpaceX's latest achievement. Just days ago, SpaceX's Falcon 9 Booster B-1067 wrote itself into the history books by completing its 25th successful launch and landing within a single year. Think about that for a moment. One rocket booster, 25 trips to space and back. It's an achievement that would have seemed impossible just a decade ago. This milestone launch carrying 21 Starlink satellites demonstrated the remarkable reliability of SpaceX's reusability program. The landing on the drone ship, just read the instructions, marked the 106th successful recovery on that vessel alone and brought SpaceX tantalizingly close to their 400th overall booster landing. Elon Musk's celebration of this achievement on social media wasn't just about marking a milestone. It was about showcasing the vast gap between SpaceX and its competitors in terms of operational capability and efficiency. Looking ahead, SpaceX isn't content with 25 flights per booster. They're already talking about pushing to 40 flights per booster, a goal that seemed outlandish even a year ago. This relentless push for improvement, for breaking their own records, continues to reshape our understanding of what's possible in spaceflight. The European Space Agency's recent budget adjustment adds another layer to this evolving story. Their reduction to 7.68 billion euros for 2025 might seem modest, about 1.4% less than 2024's budget. But the timing is crucial. ESA is at a critical juncture, developing new capabilities, including a commercial cargo spacecraft and planning ambitious missions like the Apophis asteroid expedition. They're also working to get their Vega C rocket back into service and debut the long-awaited Ariane 6. Director General Josef Ashbacher's optimism about potentially reaching 8 billion euros by year's end speaks to the delicate balance ESA must maintain. They're trying to advance ambitious space exploration goals while dealing with the financial realities of their member states. Germany, the United Kingdom, and Italy, traditionally some of ESA's strongest supporters, are all reducing their contributions, forcing the agency to make tough choices about priorities. This budget situation creates a stark reminder of the advantages private companies like SpaceX have developed. While government space agencies must navigate complex political and budgetary constraints, private companies can move more quickly, adapt more readily, and take calculated risks that public agencies often cannot. The next few weeks will be crucial for all these players. SpaceX's Starship Flight 7 could redefine our expectations for reusable spacecraft. Blue Origin's New Glenn launch, if successful, could establish them as a serious competitor in the orbital launch market, and ESA's response to their budget challenges could determine Europe's role in space exploration for years to come. These developments aren't just about rockets and budgets. They're about the future of humanity's access to space. SpaceX's achievements with Falcon 9 have already dramatically reduced the cost of reaching orbit. If Starship succeeds in its objectives, if Blue Origin can establish New Glenn as a reliable launch vehicle, and if ESA can maintain its innovative programs despite budget constraints, we could be entering an era where space becomes more accessible than ever before. The success of Flight 7 could mark the beginning of a new chapter in spaceflight, where catching and reusing massive rockets becomes routine, where deploying payloads during test flights is standard practice, and where the boundaries between testing and operations become increasingly blurred. The space industry is no longer just about reaching orbit. It's about making spaceflight sustainable, reliable, and ultimately commonplace. As we track these pivotal developments in spaceflight, one thing becomes crystal clear. We're witnessing history in the making. SpaceX's push to catch Starship's booster while deploying actual payloads isn't just about technical achievement. It's about transforming spaceflight from an extraordinary event into a regular service. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's challenge with New Glenn reminds us that reaching orbit remains one of engineering's greatest challenges, even in 2025. The question now isn't just whether these missions will succeed, but how they'll reshape the commercial space landscape. 
Will Blue Origin overcome its hurdles and join SpaceX in regular orbital operations? Can ESA maintain its ambitious goals despite budget constraints? The answers will emerge in the coming weeks and months. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think Blue Origin's new Glenn will successfully reach orbit this year? Share your prediction in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours for daily updates on these historic developments in spaceflight. We're tracking every launch, every test, and every breakthrough in humanity's journey to the stars. Until next time, this is Elon Musk 24 hours, bringing you the future of space exploration. Three launches in three months. That's the incredible pace SpaceX has set with its towering Starship rocket, and they're not slowing down. Right now, at their Starbase facility in Texas, history is in the making as the teams prepare for what could be their boldest test yet, Flight 7. Just days ago, the world watched as SpaceX achieved a critical milestone. The giant rocket standing tall against the Texas sky underwent its crucial wet dress rehearsal. As propellant coursed through its veins, Starship took on nearly 11 million pounds of fuel, enough to power a small city. The sight was breathtaking, frost coating the massive vehicle, creating an ethereal scene as vapor clouds danced around the launch pad. But this isn't just about putting on a show. This is about pushing boundaries. The new V2 design of Starship brings game-changing improvements to the table. The second stage alone has received a 25% boost in fuel capacity, pushing it beyond 1,600 tons. Why does this matter? Because every extra drop of fuel means more time in space, more capability to reach distant destinations, and more potential to transform space travel as we know it. Flight 7 isn't just another test. It's a preview of our future in space. For the first time, we'll see Starship attempt to deploy payloads in orbit. We'll witness engine relights far above Earth. And if everything goes according to plan, we might just see the first successful catch of a super heavy booster, a feat that would revolutionize rocket reusability. The countdown has begun, and on January 13th, all eyes will be on Starbase. From the engineers in the control room to space enthusiasts around the world, we're all part of this historic moment. This is Elon Musk 24 hours, and today we're breaking down every crucial detail of what could be SpaceX's most ambitious launch yet. Let's dive right in. The story of Flight 7 begins in the pre-dawn hours at Starbase. As the first hints of sunlight peek over the horizon, SpaceX teams are already moving with purpose. Their preparations following a carefully choreographed sequence that's been refined through six previous launches. But this time, something's different. The tension in the air is palpable. This isn't just another test flight. This is the moment where Starship transitions from a prototype to a true spacecraft. At T-minus 75 minutes, the launch director's voice crackles through the comm system, initiating the countdown that could change the future of space travel. Every step that follows is a testament to the engineering marvel that Starship has become. The process starts with loading liquid oxygen into the ship at T minus 44 minutes and 59 seconds, followed by liquid methane just over two minutes later. As these cryogenic fluids flow into the massive tanks, they create a mesmerizing display of vapor clouds cascading down the rocket's surface. But the real story here isn't just about the countdown, it's about the revolutionary changes SpaceX has made to this latest version of Starship. The V-2 design represents the biggest leap forward yet in the program's history. Take the forward flaps, for example. They've been completely reimagined, smaller, sharper, and repositioned closer to the vehicle's tip. This isn't just an aesthetic change. It's a calculated move to enhance navigation while providing better protection during the intense heat of re-entry. Speaking of protection, the V-2's heat shield is unlike anything we've seen before. SpaceX has developed next-generation tiles that don't just shield the spacecraft, they're backed up by a secondary layer, ensuring Starship safety even if some tiles are damaged or lost during flight. This dual-layer approach shows how SpaceX learns from every flight, adapting and improving with each iteration. The brain of this beast has evolved too. 
The new avionics system is a quantum leap forward, featuring more powerful flight computers and integrated antennas that combine Starlink, GNSS, and backup RF communication functions. But perhaps